Welcome to Deb's Thing, everybody. This is Debbie. This is a design I decided to call Rack and Pinion. It was first introduced in part two of my original design um, video as 5B, but after looking at it and thinking of what it all looked like, this kind of looks like the rack and this kind of looks like the pinion, so I don't know. I'm, I grew up in the mechanical world, but um, I'm not super, super literate. And this time I decided, which some people don't like to hear the masculine and feminine terms, but what is typically more appealing to um, the masculine population are the more rounds and neutrals. So I had first started out trying, um, another thing too is I use the same color um, on the sides on this one. I'm using um, the Egyptian colors. One is gray and one is brown. So I'm gonna, these are alternated so it gives it a little more depth of, of color. And across here where I'd use the um, jelly greens, I tried this one out in the burgundy. This little half of it, these like one, two, three segments are in caramel and this one is in the dark skin tone and I decided I'm going with a dark skin tone. So here you go. This is what I talk about is just doing, you know, like just a small piece, maybe a cup, two or three and um, see how they all look. You're going to commit, especially if you're committing to a double length, um, an extended length version. Um, I hate pulling them off and saying yuck. <laughs> so anyways, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'm not sure which one of these I like best. I love both of them, but they're completely different color schemes. But I'm completely in love with both of them. Anyways, here we go. This is a little bit different. So you start out with this one down here. And then these two, you go up one, but then this final one, these final outer ones, you go up two. So you have this square here. So it's, you know, it's a typical pace when you do just the V pattern would be down here. But just take a second to look at this. And it just gives in my brain it gives me more options. It might still work, you know, set up differently, but this is how it works for me. So to start out, I should go through my A, B, and C colors. Which one's bad? Probably this one. Okay. The colors that flare out, the bands that are like kind of pop out right here, these are not going to be the same as the A colors. The only ones that are going to be A are going to be the ones that are angled this way, but I'm still going to refer to both positions and colors as A. Color B is the color that goes up the middle, which I use the, um, you can see it pops up, you know, peeks out every now and then is the um, jelly pink and then the ones that go across which will be the C bands and they kind of go up the side too are the 600 count they've got like the orange on the outside and the hot pink on the inside and on this one which is more easy to see they're the jelly greens so keeping that in mind I'll keep those in sight I'm going to start out my color A. The first one I'm going to use is the gray color. Hey! And then we're going to go two bands up each side. So this one's a little bit of a stretch, not too much. Alright. And if you want to stay like a solid color all the way, this next Band placement will also be color A, but I'm using the brown across. And these, as I said, are the ones that flare, you know, flare out like that, like like kind of feathers or um, teeth on a gear. 
which I came up with pinion because that's a type of gear. So that's the first steps. And then you will grab your B color. Oh, I think I forgot to tell you all the colors. I'm using the um, Egyptian red. I'm not real crazy about this color. Um, it's more of an orangey red. I'm not thrilled, you know, it's not my favorite. But it's in my box. I gotta use it now, you know, now and then. And I think it works nicely with these colors. So then you'll place one there. Then we'll take our C color, which again is the jelly green. You'll place one here, and then one like this, and then you'll do it on the other side. Oops, sorry about that. Go like that kind of doesn't really. All you see is the back of my scratched up arm or hand. Oh, I'm wearing my jammies again. <laughs> I've just been feeling so dizzy these last couple of days and it probably won't make sense because I'll probably post all my videos non-sequential so I wonder what I'm talking about weeks from now when I post one, you know, I post them weeks apart. <laughs> but anyhow, I've just been having these terrible dizzy spells. So I'm definitely not going out and driving anywhere. At least not right this moment. <laughs> They don't know I'm taping, so you'll have to excuse their little noises. Now the sequence is going to be like this. You're going to take... hold on a second. I gotta go pause. I'll be alrighty. Hope it was just a minor matter. So hopefully, they won't make too much background noise, or maybe they will. Okay, this will be the sequence. Your A color goes like that on either side. Your second A band, which again I'm using the brown and not continuing with the gray, you cross like that. Then you take your color B, and bring one of just one up the middle, and then you will need four of the C colors. Place one on each side like that, and then down like this. Let me show you a few more times. And definitely want to continue to push your pins, your bands down. Your first A color band goes here. Your second A color goes like this. Then you will take your color B, one band, and, uh, I definitely find that when you push these thicker bands down, they want to twist and roll, so you have to take your time, make sure they, they go down straight. And color C, hey Ashley, you want to talk to me? Or you just want to hang out? I just want to say. Alright. What are you talking to? I'm talking to the camera. And then I put it on YouTube. Oh, so you're showing them here? Yeah, I'm showing them how to make this design. <laughs> now she's my granddaughter. She's six years old. Maybe next time I'll tilt the camera so you can see how adorable she is. You want to stand there? and You can be on the camera. Stand right over there. No. No? All right. Why? <laughs> no. Hello. Where are you? Oh, hold on. Hold on, people. Hug. Hello. Ah. Hello. There you are. Ow. Where is she? Stand right. Excuse my mess. There she is. Hi, Ashley. Oh, I hit my head. That's okay. You're still cute. Where are you? I'm sorry. You can't wiggle. There you are. Oh, aren't you pretty? There's my pretty granddaughter. Yeah. No, put it there. All right. Back to work, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hope I didn't make y'all seasick moving my camera around. I forgot I had retightened it, and um, yeah, it didn't. You're in the middle. Didn't so right. I'm in another one, or I'm in another. You'll see. You'll see. I had to talk now. Okay.
So then you place your AB in here. When I put it on YouTube, I'll show you. Okay, Ashley? Mm -hmm. And then your other A band like this. Then you'll take your B band. What are you doing? Like that. Grab four of your C colors. One goes parallel on each side. Why are you making this bracelet or this? This one. That's the same as that one. I'm doing it in different colors. And then you angle one in on each side. I think, hang on. Hang on. Oh, that one feels awful. Let me see, I'm going to throw it away. And grab one that has a little more stretch this one. to it. This? This color? It's like this color. A little bit. It's the same color. Place your A-bands here, and then your second A-bands, which you may choose a different color for. Can I put it in here? Then you take your B-color band up the middle. Then you take four of your C-bands, place two of them parallel. and then angled in. And you almost do this all the way up. Um, so when you're ready to you know, stop whatever length you're at, or if you're going to the end, just hang in there and um, I'll show you how to put the last bands on. And I will be back. Here we are. At the very end, I completed my last segment by placing the four um, C color bands. But I get I actually make a M shape. So to finish it off, we will be taking the B colored band, bringing it up. Actually, let's not do it that way. Take the A color bands. Down without trying to get them too messed up. Place the last B color band. And then, yes, capping it off, I'm going to spin it around. As you all know, got my little tiny table. So we will just twist and roll it on. And then we will begin our sequence. Sorry about that. Okay. So the first thing we'll do will be taking care of the three bands, these first three bands, by bringing this one up and then these two out. Everything's going to its home pin, so none of them. Uh, the non-home pin looping today, which is not my invention. Uh, something I just apparently made popular because I loved it so much and now I see a lot of people using it. But the only place I had seen it way back a year ago, approximately, was when I did uh, the zipper bracelet by Rainbow Loom. And they used that technique. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about, so I'll wait till I'm doing it on a tutorial and then I'll point it out. So, this will be the sequence. We will first go in and take these C colored bands, bring one out here. And I did notice that, well, you can't really see it on this one, but sometimes underneath kind of um, starts twisting. So you just might want to play around with it like that and get it to stop from twist, being all twisted, just so it makes your bracelet look a little bit neater. Next, you will take the other C-colored band straight up. 
it's a pretty easy sequence of steps and I saw that one just twists a little so just do that to kind of give it, loosen it up and let it unroll itself. And then we'll bring this out one of the A colored bands, the A bands. I shouldn't say color. Let's see, this thing looks like it's twisted. Actually, more of the placement, I guess, than the color. But since we placed the color bands there, it's also the colors. I try to make things so it's less confusing. Sometimes it's more. Okay, um, I guess depending on how you want to count, either bringing this center B colored band is either your first or your last, um, last in your sequence. So I'm going to call it the last, and then we'll start again. So this is your first band you pull out. And I'm just giving it a little help so it doesn't overstretch it and because it's fighting against all those heavier, stickier bands. And there I am just trying to get the little twist out of that. So that's your first step, taking those two diagonal bands. Diagonal. It's a hard word to say. I always got to remember that extra syllable. There's some days I try to say it, and I just say the angle of bands because I can't get the word out. Okay, now you bring the same B colored bands. No, C. Sorry, C colored. The ones that are right here. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then we bring this horizontal band out. And then we bring Now you can go back and forth, but um, after you've loomed for a while, when you can tell that what you do a sequence on one side isn't going to affect the other side because they're separated by this, it's not like you can go and do the whole side over here and then do all this side, but you can do a few few of the steps before you swap sides. Sometimes that's a little more convenient. For example, I will show you right now. So instead of going back and forth, back and forth with each one, you can, if it's a little easier and quicker, take this band out. Then do this one, do this one, and this one. Because the only band that affects it is this bringing this middle one up. So we can do all four steps on that side. And then we can come here oops, and grab one band at a time, not two. Bring her out. And then it. That's one, two, three, and four. And then the final step is to bring the center band straight up. So pull everything away. Yeah, I really like like the name I came up with it, Rack and Pinion. Uh, it has such a, you know, like these with like the gear, like you know what a gear looks like and has little teeth sticking out. That kind of looks like that. And the pinion part is, it's like a linear piece of metal with little teeth sticking up. And so the pinion would roll onto the rack that's the teeth of the, you know, Pinion thing. Say this is, say this is the pinion. It's got little teeth on it. Roll like that, and it moves things. Like you heard a rack and pinion steering. So obviously, 
that gearing system helps make that work. I, I, I sound so professional, right? <laughs> I have no clue what I'm talking about. Just very little. Yes, I've always helped my, well, until I was, until 97, I worked side by side at my husband's restoration shop where to this day he still restores an older American cars to top of the line show quality. You would think it would make a great living. It does not. <laughs> Just sucks the life out of them. So hopefully someday we'll get somewhere else. Anyways, back to business. This is the first band. The second. Third. Fourth. And then up the middle. I'm going to show it one more time, um, going back and forth for those who feel more comfortable do, doing it that way. One. And one on this side. Then two is the second C-colored band. And these aren't twisting as much as my practice round did. Three and three. Four. Four. And then the last step is bringing up the middle. Oh, see this one twisted. Oh no. That looks terrible. See how twisted that one? Oh, that one's twisted too, and that one's... Ah! I'm not paying attention. Sometimes you can straighten it out. Sorry if I'm a little crooked. It's really hard to... I've always got to move my camera, and then i got to move my table, and it's really hard to get it all lined up. Okay, one more time, and then I will let you go on your own. One, two, three, and four. And by the way, my granddaughter helped me um, place a lot of these bands. And then she took off to harass her auntie, my daughter Olivia. And she's over helping grandma for a while. <laughs> but that's okay. It gets done a little faster this way, but you know what? It's so sweet with her figuring things out. Because as she saw, you know, she she was in charge of all the the Egyptian bands. Was, oh, look, it's making a zigzag up the side. She's like, oh, it's so cute. She knows what a zigzag is. <laughs> She's in first grade. Be seven at the end of May. In the end of May, I can't believe it. Gosh, I'll never forget the day when my daughter called to tell me. I could tell just by the tone of her voice, "Mom, I have something to tell you." And I was, I wrote it in a letter, but I'm afraid to mail it out. So I thought I'd tell you now. Hmm. I wonder what she's gonna tell me. <laughs> but you know, it's all fine. She's a great little blessing. All, all children are. All children deserve to be born. They really should be because you never know what your life is going to turn out. You can only anticipate in fear and fear is not the way to live because wow, you know, we were all afraid. And, well, she was 20 when she had her baby but you know, your mom, as a mom you worry and oh she's young and she didn't get to go to school like she did. But hey, you know, Ashley's worth more than an education, you know, more than a college education for somebody. She's an angel. We love her. and wouldn't have it any other way. All right. There goes my rambling. I will stop. I'll turn off the camera, finish this up because it's redundant, of course. And um, 
we'll see what it looks like when we pull it off the loom. Have fun. <laughs> I finished the last full sequence bringing this middle band up and as you can see there are just two bands remaining. Very easy to finish up. And then somewhere, here's my clip. <clears throat> I'm going to reach under here and grab this so that we can hold it all together. Or I can. You hold your own together. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Now for the big reveal. Just want to pull these off so that any twisting. Um, they make, a re I think, a real pretty design along the edge, kind of a scallopy finish. It's, I, I love it. Here it is in the brown, which I'll be finishing off real soon. So if you pull them off and let them kind of spring into place, you can you can see how they're they're making their little shape. And that is one thing that's really nice about um, the specialty thicker bands where here this one was all done in um, using opaque and it looks nice but when you look at the different, you know, look at the two, this is just much more appealing. Alright, so this will take a little while, lots of bands, pull off. You can. I will not be insulted if you fast forward to see me um, displaying what it looks like, because as you know, I usually do that to you guys. But you know, the fewer edits, the fewer segments of video that have to be spliced together. Um, well, it's not technically splicing any longer, but when you when I use the um, Windows Movie Maker, you all have let me know on occasion that sometimes they do not go in order, so I have to take the extra amount of time to check each segment to make sure it stays in order. So you don't need to. Turn it off and turn it back on and find that one little segment somewhere in the middle when it should be at the end. I know, what is she talking about? <laughs> this is this is gonna be a long brace. I don't think I need to make it two full lengths. Um, a couple of my daughters, you know, they get real upset when you say, oh. This is done in masculine colors, but I think if you could take a room full of a hundred men <clears throat> and a hundred women, the vast majority of men would f probably point to this one and like, the females would probably point to either one of those. It's just seems to be how, you know, made but there's nothing wrong if a girl likes this one a guy likes this one I have no problem with it but um, some people get upset when we refer to something like this as more in the masculine colors now a couple of these that um, they're not right I just do a little flick like see this one here it twisted if you just flick it just flick it there you go so it's gonna take a little bit of organizing the bands when you you know I think most of you know when you take it off the loom, but there you have it, and let's see how huge is it, yeah. It's, oops, sorry, it's really big for my wrist, but hopefully some I find some guy that'll like to wear this, or a girl with a really big wrist. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, I'm, I shouldn't laugh. Um, my best friend growing up in high school, she was um, 5'3 and small bone, and she was 5'11 and large bone, and uh, she hated it, but... Um, this would probably have fit her wrist. And she was very statuesque and I admired and envied her tallness and 
being able to reach in the top cupboard for things. <laughs> I, to this day, I have to ask my mom. But if I'm with my mom, it was 82. Mommy, can you reach that for me? <laughs> so anyways, here I go on a rabbit trail. Sorry about that. This is Rack and Pinion. And please like, you know, hit, click the little like button if you do indeed like it. Feel free to subscribe to Deb's Things if you would like to see more of these designs. And of course, um, check me out on Instagram at Deb's Thing. And, oops, see this one kind of twisted too. If you see something that's a little light, usually if you just give it a little tug and go like that with your finger, it will um, put it into place. If you make this design and want to show me rendition, make sure you, um, you know, the hashtag rack and pinion, P I N I O N, all one sentence, you know, all, you all know, you know, all one, no spaces, rack and pinion bracelet, all one big long um, set, bunch of letters, hashtag rack and pinion bracelet. And that'll be great because that, that make, what happens then is, when anyone clicks on that hashtag, there's a nice page of everybody's rendition, so it just gives it its own little home page. Um, for the most part, some other people use the same words for other things, and it's not always just Rainbow Loom, but it, it gives it a cent, you know, a central location. Alrighty, thanks so much. Bye-bye.